Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, we are going to start our series on Christmas, and um, we're going to be talking about some things. And a lot of these studies, we are going to do a study where we're going to go through a Bible study on the true birth of Jesus Christ, things that are actually biblical. You'll find them in the... You get my big, thick King James Bible. You'll find them in God's perfect written word, uh, the proper way to remember, okay, and rejoice uh, over the birth of Jesus Christ. Light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light. Remember that? Light has come into the world. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh. He's God fully and completely. He's born in the likeness of sinful flesh. We'll be talking about that in some of these series too. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick intro video. It's not going to be long, but we're going to be talking about stuff that they will not tell you. People who stand for Christmas hardcore will not tell you. Okay. I keep looking into it. I've done some research. I was kind of really not for Christmas because when I start getting on a, um, a love of the truth, um, the word Christmas is not in the Bible. So right there is a red flag, and people will mock that. Uh, just like people who mock when we try to point out that Trinity is not in the Bible. And they'll say, uh, when you're going to grab something and say it's a title for something that happens in the Bible, it better be in the Bible. So it's Christmas is not in the Bible. But the birth of Jesus Christ is in the Bible. So I wanted to go through, and I've done some research, but like I said, at first I was like, I, I want to use Bible terms. So if you want to take a day and um, say, hey, I want to read the story of Jesus Christ, and I want to give God glory and thanks for coming into the world. Uh, Jesus Christ, he was already in the world before um, the virgin birth. Remember, he had his indestructible body before in the Old Testament. It was Jesus Christ there. Uh, capital L, Lord, is Jesus Christ. And he's there in the future, in his under, like right now, in the future, in his indestructible body. But there was a 33-year period where he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's what it means where he came. Uh, sometimes people say, well, it said he came, only came uh, in likeness of sinful flesh. But I've done some studies on it, and after doing my studies, I'd have nothing. When we get done with this, my goal is to show you guys truth, not hide anything from you, but teach you absolute truth when it comes to Christmas, the proper way to celebrate, if you want to celebrate, I use the word rejoice, be thankful, give God glory um, for the virgin birth and profess our belief in it, um, how to do it properly, to do it the Bible way, King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English, uh, and not man's way, okay? Uh, not being spoiled by philosophy and the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Okay? Um, the more I do this study, the more I'm realizing uh, Christmas is a flesh holiday. Totally about the flesh. It's total, It's not about Jesus Christ. And there's people who try to make it about Jesus Christ. You cannot put a G, uh, what we call a Jesus stamp on something pagan and try to make it Christian. Okay? What happens? You start bringing in all these pagan rituals, which we're going to find out about the Christmas tree. Um, we're going to learn about where the wreaths came from. You'll be shocked at this one. But so a lot of the practices that are done, even though Christians, professing Christians around the world, say they're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, when you try to put a Jesus stamp on something that's pagan in origin, you're trying, what happens is you bring over practices that are satanic, and that's what Satan wants. Okay? Setting down, opening your Bible, reading about the birth of Jesus Christ with your family, there's nothing wrong with that. But is that all you do? Uh, the, if you're honest, if you're really a good proponent, hardcore proponent of Christmas, if you're honest, you'll say, no, that's not all we do. We do all these other practices, too. They're not in the Bible. But I've done and looked into this stuff. So we're going to look into stuff like the word Christmas is where we're going to start our first uh, part to this series. And we're going to go through and we're going to talk about things um, throughout this series about, you know, we're going to start with Christmas, the word Christmas. Where does it come? What does it mean? Um, we're going to start with, uh, are we going to start with that? Uh, we're going to talk about some of the statements that people make uh, saying like December is the best time of the year to preach the gospel. 
We're going to look in Scripture to see if that's true or if that's an excuse to justify celebrating something you're not supposed to be celebrating. Um, but like I said, uh, we're going to get into the Christmas tree. Where is it, what's the origin of the Christmas tree? Is it in Scripture? Okay. I think I haven't finished this study because I don't know if you want to call it a Christmas tree, but the Old Testament does mention pagans grabbing a tree, doing something to it to worship false gods. Okay. We're going to get into that because God, people like to take that and twist it and say, see, God says that it's okay. Because the way it was worded, and I, when I did the study a long time ago, it was based off of the Christmas tree in itself. God created the Christmas tree. Uh, not Christmas tree. The tree. The tree they were using itself. God created that tree. It's not evil. It's not wicked. You can cut it down, use it for firewood, and I'm getting into it more, you know, build stuff with it. It was how they were using it. When you actually look into the ritual of the Christmas tree and what it's done, You'll, if you're truly Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman, and you're absolute truth, and you want to give God glory and God um, thanks in all things, and do it in the name of Jesus, you realize you can't make a Christmas tree, uh, set up a Christmas tree in the name of Jesus. It's pagan, and it's very shocking that I did this as a kid growing up. Um, so, I want to get into a lot of this stuff, so we're going to get into it. One thing I need to throw out there, I was never scarred by Christmas, you know, holidays, and where I just hate holidays. I kind of drifted away from holidays in the military. I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, we uh, celebrate, uh, what is it? We'd go together as a group. When I was a kid growing up, we got together as a family. We got to spend time with family, watch football, you know, for Thanksgiving. And uh, for Christmas, it was just pig out, and we get all these gifts and everything and watch movies, Hollywood movies that are Christmas movies. Um, so we kind of did a little bit of both. We even, like I said, you can't help it. It just, you can, you can really fight it because I know people who don't. But as kids growing up with a professing Christian family, Santa Claus got brought into it and everything. But when we do these studies, you're going to realize something. We really won't, so far I haven't come across anything where Santa Claus when it comes to, like I said, the word Christmas, the definition of Christmas, where it comes from, it, had, it doesn't really have anything to do with Santa Claus so far. It might, as I continue my study, I'm trying to throw these out as I do the studies. So, but we brought in all these other stuff. Then I joined the military, and we got into the military. I was away from family, stopped doing things with family. And the uh, holidays, basically, in the military was everybody gets together, gets drunk, and parties. And there, that's not far from the truth of these holidays. It's a, it's a flesh holiday. It's about pleasing the flesh. Um, but like I said, we'll get into it. Holidays not in the Bible. I know people are going to get upset. No people mock. That's the other thing, a motivation for me to do these videos. People will mock okay, absolute truth. You say, okay, here's absolute truth. And they'll mock it. Okay? We'll be talking about, I mean, some of these videos will be reiterating we're talking about stuff in other ones because you can't help it because we're going to talk about what's so important about December 25th okay um, because people will mock absolute truth Jesus wasn't born December 25th so what and we're going to read in some of these studies that Jesus might have been conceived in December 25th around that era around December excuse after excuse after excuse to justify a flesh holiday because here's the thing do you celebrate the conception of Jesus Christ or the birth of Jesus Christ? Right? We're going to go through and talk about a lot of the desperation of these people who... we I, I don't personally get attacked because I'm going to make these videos and then it's on you. I'm not going to keep attacking people. This is not a salvation issue. I want to throw that out there too. It's not a liberty issue. If you, if you want to, go back and watch my videos on Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death or liberty at its ba basic meaning, I think is what it was, the title to that video, where we talk about Christmas isn't a liberty issue. Okay. So what is it then? Uh, what's the big thing about Christmas? So I can ramble on and on and on, but let's get to the first study, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Like I said, please have an open heart in the sense of not trying to... Try to open. Some people will say that when they try to feed you lies. We're going to go through facts. And we're going to go through the Bible. And what I mean by that is don't go into this saying, 
be stubborn and be like this, okay? I love my Christmas holiday, I love all the practices, and I'm going to do whatever I want, you know? And I'm just going to make comments and stuff. If you want to, go for it. It'll just show your ignorance. And I'm not being mean, I'm just saying, if you an he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto you. So, let's get into these studies, and uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord.